All right, we are, it tells me it's live. So uh, if you are just watching the show right now and you're watching it after the fact, there's gonna be show notes posted down in the comment section below. So to make sure you check down there. If you're wondering well, what in the world we're gonna be talking about, because we're gonna cover a lot of different topics this evening. So make sure you check down there. Right now we're still in pre-show mode and I've got Jason Vong in the house here with me. Jason, go ahead and say hi. Yo, what's up guys? Feels like it's been a long time. A it long always one. feels like it's been a long time, but we were live just last week. It just feels like a lot of stuff happens, man. I don't know. It just oh boy, we have a lot to talk about, man. A lot to talk about. Oh shoot, there is a lot. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what the chat's going on. Some crazy stuffs going on. Someone said Dion Chapman said, "Did Danny eject himself?" Referencing a few shows ago when I ejected David Osler off of the show by accident, I. Which was not my intention. Um, let's see. What's going on here? I'm the Brown says, go live soon. Where are you guys? Turn on the video. I'm the Brown. You're here long enough to know that. We start at 7 p.m. That is the official wow. start time. Sometimes we start early. We sometimes, start early. We, <laughs> sometimes we start on time. Uh, let's see here. And on George Vee is saying... <laughs> George Villa saying everyone hit the like button. I would appreciate it if you could do that. That'd be great. Uh, let's see. David Oster was live just an hour ago. Damn it, David. <laughs> no, it's all good. Paging uh, David Oster. Join us. To this one. <laughs> Get him on the live show. Jack him again. Oh, that'd be so bad. Um, let's see. Omar Alexander. What up, guys? What's going on? I'm the Brown posting a lot of eyeballs looking at us. Uh, Illuminati status here. Now, let's see here. Photo me in the house. Oh, photo me Ike. Milo Madrid, A7 III versus Canon EOS R. That's kind of tough. I mean, we'd have some biases towards that. Um, I still think the A7 III is the best money, best camera for the money. I would oh. think Jason would agree with that right now, too. Oh, totally, man. <laughs> 4K, no crop. <laughs> Unless you're shooting 4K 30, though, then there's a bit of a crop. Uh, J Anime MTMG says, holy crap, this is the first time I'm watching live. I get to watch both of my favorite Sony camera YouTubers. Thank you both for helping me learn my camera. You're welcome, Jay. Yeah, definitely, man. Stanley Morris says, what's up, people? Hey, what's going on, man? Thanks for joining the show this evening. Um, man, we've got a, a really, really long rundown this evening, guys. We've got a, so much to cover for, from Photokina. We do hope our guest does make it this evening. Okay, looks like he's hopefully getting here soon. Hopefully. Our guest goes with us. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we wanted to bring a guest on that was actually at Photokina, so that's going to help us out this evening. We have a lot to uh, talk about. Maybe we should keep New Gear short, huh? We we might. We might have to. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Joey Webb says, hello. Uh, let's see. Jeremy Abru. Guys, when is the new APS-C Sony rig dropping? Uh, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Whoa. Oh, Whoa, we just. Oh, oh. there we go. Oh, just David. in the nick of time. David, can you hear us? Oh, boy. We're getting that. Uh, I'm going to have to check them, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> but let's see here. <laughs> it isn't a show. Again, Danny and again we are we are still in the pre show mode. We're trying to get uh, Dave Altizer on the show here. Jason, do you hear that sound? Um, I hear it. I hear like a I can hear like a fan sound. <laughs> Jason uh, says he thinks he sees a new Sony APS-C camera behind me. How'd you know? I need to do a better job hiding that thing. Dave can't hear you yet, man. All right. We while we sort that out, I'll read a few comments. Jason says hashtag that one ejector guy. <laughs> Uh, uh, Neon, <laughs> and we do a full HD live stream someday. 
Someday. Someday. I, I, you know why? It's because we're using Google Hangout. That's why it's only capping us at 720p. If we found some other way, we could probably go 1080p for one of these streams. Okay, so Dave says he can hear us, but we can't hear him. Uh oh. Hey. There we on. go. Oh, we can hey hear guys. you. All right, All right, it went through. It went through. Here we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Cool. Does he have a Hasselblad right next to him? What is going on here? <laughs> oh, what is going on? Yeah, I got oh, the my. X1D. They sent it to me for a review. It's oh, been nice. a lot of fun. We can talk <laughs> about that if you want. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, we got a lot. I got here. my uh, journey mug here. If you don't mind, I'm going to crack open a German beer. Oh, man. Go for it, man. Celebrating Oktoberfest. Heck yeah. <laughs> Are we live right now? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. We, are we are live. We are live. Be careful what you say. Uh, we, oh, we are live. Don't don't cool. leave, don't leave too much secrets now. <laughs> you told me we were uh, we told me we were starting in like five minutes. Uh, <laughs> Seven p.m. is uh, the official start time, but we usually do pre the pre show a little bit prior to that. So, cool. um, well, welcome Hello. aboard, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, no worries. Was... So glad you can yeah, join hang us out before today. The show. Oh, yeah. that's it's okay, good. man. <laughs> okay, so uh, for those of you that don't know Dave, uh, Dave, you do. Dave actually has his own personal account, and he also has an account. Um, I think you might want to talk a little bit about this with Kino Tika when we get uh, get into it a little bit. But sure. um, yeah, I get a chance to introduce a little bit about that. But I first met Dave. Al Am I getting this right? Altizer. Al Al Altizer. Altizer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We met him at we met him at VidCon, uh, VidCon 2018 over the summer, and the funny thing is, I I saw one of his videos beforehand. I think it might have been Black Magic related. I think, but um, but yeah, we touched base then. So, um, feeding catch win. Potokina finished up recently, and oh, my so, just pouring a beer. Just go for it, man. And so Dave was out there recently, and we're going to definitely pick his brain because he's had a chance to check out some of the new products, cameras, and lenses that are gonna, uh, that were out there. So, And the most important thing is I met Kai W. That's the only thing that matters. I, I saw you in the vlog. I saw you at the end. I need, to know, <laughs> I need to know what happened at the end of that vlog because you kind of were just standing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just like, I was so, he's such a celebrity that like, I was just awkwardly like, I know he's filming right now. I don't want to look awkward, but I think I just made it worse. Did you get a photo with him? Yeah, we got a selfie, but we only had like a few minutes of interactions, honestly. But uh, Dan Chung from Atomos introduced me to him. And, um, I was heavily inspired by him as I'm sure you guys are as well. So yeah, big fan. Kai. I mean, what are you talking about? We're already Asian, so we're <laughs> fired by Kai. <laughs> nah, I'm <messing. laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, I wonder sometimes, because I know on his vlog, if anybody in the chat had even seen it, and um, he had actually got stopped early on. He was, like, talking about a camera, and some guy just, like, stops him right in his video while he's talking. <laughs> and... Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> So it must be tough for him, man. He's probably getting stopped quite frequently, um, like Jason Vong occasionally. So, um, oh, what? what? <laughs> yeah, whenever would, Jason Vong's at a I show. Need to I need to apologize about the set here. This is my kitchen. So uh, I normally would drive down to our studio and like film there, but I apologize for this dark, ominous. It's okay, man. I mean, Get yeah, comfortable. Oh, yeah. You How? know it. <laughs> Yeah, dude, but we are definitely going to pick your brain about uh, Photokina, and uh, I do want to pick your brain a little bit about that Panasonic interview you did. It was the <laughs> most hilarious video ever, and if you guys on the Thank chat, you. I know some of you guys are just jumping in, we're going to start the show very soon, make sure you go in the description below, check out Dave's personal channel as well as his channel with Kino Tika. He has this really hilarious interview with Panasonic, which we'll talk about later, and some of you might like it. Some of you might find it rubbed the wrong way. But I thought it was pretty funny um, about how you poked at certain things about the camera. But we'll talk <laughs> a little bit more about that. I was laughing. Um, I yeah, that's that my uh, – I, um, I was watching an interview with Tim Heidecker from Tim and Eric Awesome Show. Great job. If, uh, if half of your audience thinks you're an idiot, that means that you're doing the right thing. So that's how I go about my videos. 
Man, just just go for it. I, I think it's pretty good. I like the I like the what's cooking or what was your, what's your phrase that you're going with? Yeah, what's cooking? I I don't know. I just again <laughs> I wa- I watched like Tim Schmoyer when I first started out, and he was like, oh. you, need, you need a catchphrase, and I was like, well, nobody has said this one yet, so now I, I <laughs> that's what I say. Okay, so we might see a trademark later on with that if he hasn't already done so. Folks, it is Monday Live at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you for joining us this evening. I've got my current um, and uh, usual host, Jason Vaughn. Go ahead and say hi to everybody. Yeah, what's up, guys? How's it going? (laughs) And we've got a special guest this evening, Dave Altizer. Dave, say hi. What's up? What's cooking, everybody? (laughs) There we go. You might have seen him in some... You might have seen him in some videos and uh, reviews that he's done on the other channel, Kino Tika, and also on his personal channel as well. You can find links to his channel down in the description below, and hopefully you'll consider checking him out after the show or at some point in the show if you can. But we're going to go ahead and dive in into our usual uh, segments here this evening. We're going to start off and kick it off with hashtag new gear. Let us know in the comments down below if there's any been a new gear you picked up this week or maybe last week and we didn't, you didn't get a chance to mention it. And just letting you know this evening, we're going to talk about some Sony stuff. We're going to talk about some delays, unfortunately, and also some recaps at Phonokina. Uh, and Dave's definitely going to help us out on that this evening because he was there at the event. So um, let's go ahead and start off with Jason. Jason, our gas expert. Um what have you picked up in the recent week since last week? Every time, man. It's just like you hype, you hype it up, but then I just didn't really buy anything. <laughs> How is that possible? Jason did not. Oh, oh, Dave just disappeared. Oh, you we ejected just, Dave out. <laughs> I have just somehow ejected Dave. It's funny. I ejected a Dave, uh, Dave Osler, and I'm now ejected Dave Altizer. I don't know if it's a Dave thing. You have. Uh, oh, he's back. Vendetta against okay, Dave. Dave is back. Dave is back. Sorry. Okay, it looks. Sorry. I'm in my. I don't have my like fiber internet from my office, so I'm I'm plugged into Ethernet. But my wife's watching Netflix upstairs. I told her to go to LTE. <laughs> okay. There you go. All right. That's uh, that's potato quality. <laughs> I don't know, it's potato potato podcasts. We we do that every week. Uh, so Jason, nothing recently that you haven't picked up, or oh, man, I had not picked up anything. What not about the twenty four? Did you pre order the twenty four or anything like I that? I did or? not pre order twenty four. Oh. I do want to review it first when I get with the review unit copy in. I want to review it first and then really sit on it and think if I need the lens or not. Okay. Uh, new gear on my end. I haven't got anything other than I, I other than the um, not camera related. I guess I went ahead and purchased a used iPhone 10. I went ahead and did that. There was That's some kind e- of a camera. <laughs> nice. There was there was some eBay bucks going on, and so I got it for like 700 for a 256 gigabyte model and. The person's pretty much kept it in the case the entire time. So hopefully it wasn't a bad idea. I I mean, I did want to pick up the newer one, but I figured I might as well just save quite a bit of money on the iPhone 10. I mean, you're the, only really saving $300. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think it's like $500 or something. <laughs> <like that. Right. laughs> um, but yeah, that's on my end. And lately I've been, I have the, I know last time people were egging me to get the Sony 400 F 2.8. It's been in my cart at B&H Photo. I've been putting it into the cart, taking it out of the cart, putting it into the cart, and making a decision whether or not I should get it or not. So what what Danny's really saying is because B&H is on holiday right now, he can't check out until tomorrow (laughs) night. That's when he's going to bet. That's when he's going to buy the 400 2.8. So I keep talking myself out of it. I don't need it. I don't need it. (laughs) It's awesome, Dan. You just just get the lens, man. It's, uh, it's what you it's, it's what you hope for. It's what you're hoping for. Oh, absolutely. I completely agree. But I'm I'm just gonna shoot at ISO twenty thousand. It's okay. I don't I don't need that extra two stops of light. Oh, um, man, that 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 five point six, that two point eight difference. Uh, you're, shooting, you're shooting football at night. I think you need that two point eight, Dan. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that's a big one did for you, me. Did you guys see that the new MacBook Pros were on sale like a week ago? Like the really? 2018 MacBook Pros, it was like two hundred dollars off. On Already, <laughs> I almost pulled the trigger on them. Yeah, I know. I'm waiting for Black Friday. They'll probably be good, but I was kind of like mind blown. It's like two, two or three hundred dollars off. I mean, I would if I didn't already have gotten the new Razer 15. It's okay, oh, Jason. Cool. Just, just add, just add know. the Mac. Just hit the MacBook. Yeah. 
just get a just get an iMac. I I don't want to be PC, but I have to use Premiere Pro, so I got to get the the PC laptop. Well, what about that video that was titled Premiere Pro to Final Cut that you did last year? Oh, that was, uh, that uh, was two years ago, and I just left it up there because it was just getting me views. So I was I was <laughs> literally I was suggested that video literally like yesterday. That's the only reason why that. I'm just surprised people are still commenting on that video. No, Nate's calling you out, man. <laughs> I, I got to make another video saying why I switched back to Premiere Pro. So, Jason, Jason, <laughs> look behind you. There's some red on your screen. Did Premiere crash on you? Um, I'm just that's just for display only. I <laughs> I ejected my hard drive without saving my project. So I was like, ah, whatever. It's could be part of the set. I see, I see a lot of problems there. Um, oh yeah, it's <laughs> like that's an error message. There's a lot of disconnected media. You know, that's how I row. All right. Okay, Dave. Um, any new gear new you gear? picked up recently? Yeah, anything in the last few weeks? Well, I, I was talking about this earlier, but I did not purchase this. Uh, if I did, then my wife would probably divorce me because <laughs> this is literally a you know eight thousand dollar rig right here. But Hasselblad sent me the X1D with the new eighty millimeter f one point nine, which uh, I had to send back, unfortunately. They also sent me this 45 millimeter and I used the Hasselblad the entire time when I was at Photokina for like thumbnails and for Instagram and stuff. And man, it, like it's so slow. Like it's the slowest camera in the world. It's a, it's like a three second camera. It's like compose, focus, one, 1,000, two, 2,000 click. Like that's how long it takes. Oh, but wow. when you get it and when it's in focus, Man, medium format. It is like you can't unsee it. It's so special. So I have totally fallen in love with this thing. I do not want to give it back. But I did, we did use the uh, Sony module, that little XLR module for Sony cameras. I've never used one before on my a7 III. Mm -hmm. um, and now I think I might pick one up because I think it's really versatile. I hear, I hear a lot of good things about that. Up. No? We just... We just lost him. Okay, hold on. Hello, hello. Okay, we right can now. hear you. We can hear you. I just Jason, said, I just, I just said uh, I heard a lot of good things about the uh, the XL KOM or something like that, right? The one that attaches yeah. your multi interface hot shoe, and then you get like XLR ports. Yeah, I think it's pretty awesome. Exactly. You get actual like uh, dials on it too, which is actually a huge deal because like on the Sony cameras, you have to go into the menus to change the levels, which is really annoying. So. Having a dial that you just click is nice. And then I use the Shure handheld mic with that tiny little, I know Jason, you have one of these, the little Shure wireless with a little blue tip on it, you know? Oh, that's I love Sennheiser, that. that's a Sennheiser. Oh, I'm sorry. Oops. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know it started with an S, uh, but yeah, we used that um, and I really like that setup. It's so compact, so yeah. But I might pick those up, that's what I'm saying. I did not buy anything except for this beer mug when I was in Germany. Hashtag new gear beer mug. You got, I mean, you got it, right? I mean, like it's from Germany. They're crazy on Oktoberfest. I'm, I'm, I'm getting exactly. It. Okay, good. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it's Oktoberfest right now. There wasn't any Oktoberfest stuff going on out there, but beer, like when they say that Germans drink a lot of beer, like that's not a stereotype. It's like a serious thing. Like every restaurant, everybody had beer. The waiter didn't even ask what drink. So just bring beer. So it was great because the beer was cheaper than water. Like oh wow, by about a dollar. Well, there <laughs> so, you go. Your breakfast. Yeah, but uh, yeah, beer mug. Hashtag new gear, beer mug. Awesome. All right. Okay. Let's jump into the hashtag new gear in the chat. Um, creative film says that one blurry guy. <laughs> Uh, oh, sport 500 hashtag new gear, new Indra CLT 103 tripod with a Sure ball head. Also, a Sony 100 to 400 GM on order from B and H. Nice. nice, uh, sucks you got to wait a little bit longer for that, but that is awesome. I love that lens. Eli hashtag new gear spider 5 pro plus. Nice, Joey Webb hashtag new gear full frame on a budget A72 with the Sam Yang 85 1.4. Oh, 
J Anime MTMG New Gear just picked up the Ziyun Crane V2. Very nice. A Franklin Yang New Gear A6000 51.8, 55210, and the 5518 Zeiss for six hundred dollars. What a whopping deal! That is. What? Whopping the 55 deal. Zeiss is like six hundred more than six hundred already. That's a phenomenal deal. Yes, amazing. Yeah, AW New Gear just got the Sony A7 III and waiting for the Tamron 28 to 75. Just starting out. Nice. Fantastic good, good combo. starter. Fantastic yeah. starter set right there. Uh, Rizvin, uh or Rizvin, uh, hashtag New Gear 85 Bodice. Nice. Uh, New Gear Sony 21 millimeter converter for the 28 millimeter FE. I love it. I am looking at someone, uh, someone's post on a 28 millimeter FE. I was thinking about gra grabbing a copy because for a pretty good price. So we'll hashtag, see if I get a copy. Hashtag not wide enough. Um, <laughs> Hashtag New Gear, GoPro, 7 Black, stabilization is great, pre-order the 24 GM from Nevac 888. We're going to talk about the GoPro for sure today. Nice. Chris Kalani, New Gear, Mavic 2 Pro. Author CC, Hashtag New Gear, Aperture F7, Godox, sorry, Godox 8200. Oh. <laughs> oh, have we been have we been saying it wrong? This is oh, Godox. Man. Okay, so what happened was Rob Hall from Robert Hall Photography and Francisco Joel Hernandez got the rep of Godox on camera, and we're like, "How do you pronounce your company name?" And she was like, "Godox," and I was like, "Oh my god!" And I, I got like know. five people on Instagram send me that video. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's good. I'm glad we know now. God ox. I'm, All right, great. Ox, god ox. <laughs> it is they're using the Chinese characters god and ox. So it's god ox. All right. Jay San, New Gear isn't about need, it's about want. Yes, it is a lot about want lately. And Joshua Morell, New Gear Tamron 20 to 75. Uh let's see here. Obeg says, now that's a surprise. Jason did not pre-order the G Master 24. Where have wait, what what where have gone your lens last? I don't know. But there's a lot of stuff that's coming out after Photo Kina. I, I, I got to be smart oh, with my money, man. Oh, oh, SR5 rumor right here. Jason just said it right now, guys. Just hang tight. Oh, yeah, hang definitely. Tight. All these new cameras coming out. That's SR5 <laughs> right there. Uh, Cosa Clicks, uh, new gear. Just switched to Sony and got the 85 F1.8. Let's see here. Photo Miak says, I changed my mind. I think I, wa I was a, a Z7 instead of a Z6 now. So it looks like he's going for a Z7. Um, Diamond Cut, hashtag new cure. Pre-ordered the A7S3. Can't wait to get it. 2020 can't come soon enough. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Reginald S, this dude should sell his Hasselblad and buy some new 2018 Wi-Fi. Oh, what the heck? That's me. I need new Wi-Fi. That's true. It's okay. You're part of the potato club because we always yeah. get slammed for our potato, our potato <laughs> podcast. It's pr primarily just me. All right. I think so you, you fulfill the requirement. So <laughs> <laughs> that one Chinese guy, hashtag new gear, loving my 85 GM, waiting for BH to ship my Sigma 50 and Godox 8400 Pro. The gas is out of control. Hello. Wait, was that username inspired by you, Daniel? I have no idea, dude. Maybe. I think it is. <laughs> David Johnson <laughs> pre-ordered the that. Narbox 2.0, 256 gigabyte. There's, is there a new one? Uh, the, the, two, the version 2 is coming out. Uh, Russ Lee, new gear, 16 to 35 G Master. Coming in tomorrow, looks like. Nice. Um, hashtag JBL, Extreme 2 Speaker for photo shoots by Chris Barr. Hey, sometimes you got to have some music on those photo shoots. Uh, Andy Garcia, New Gear Tokina Firin 20 millimeter and a pre owned A7R2 as backup camera. Very Not interesting. Bad. NC, hashtag New Gear Sony A7000. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Juan Gill, New Gear just ordered the A7 III, should get here this week. Philip Henry, hashtag New Gear Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4 coming in tomorrow. Nice. Uh, let's see here, guys. Sorry, we have to take the questions after the uh, the main part of the show. You'll have to repost it later. All right, yes. I think we're gonna go ahead and get started on our news because we got a lot of stuff to cover. And Dave here is our expert of Photokina type news, so he's gonna be here for that. But first, before we get started, we want to go ahead and talk a little bit about some Sony news, Sony rumors, 
and so forth before we jump into Photokina. And one thing that came out of Photokina with regards to Sony is that they didn't announce any products at Photokina. So it was a little bit dry on their end, but they did announce this, the 24 millimeter F1.4 G Master prior to it. But they did hold a press conference and um, you guys can chime in on this, but it looks like, let me know in the comments if you guys are excited about animal eye autofocus. I got. I gotta Ooh. say this. I gotta say this, Danny. I, yeah, I read something ahead. really funny on Facebook the other day. It was go like, uh, it was like Nikon, no eye autofocus. Canon, single <laughs> eye autofocus. Sony, eye autofocus for animal. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I think that I. I don't know if there's anybody that shoots wildlife in the in the chat right now. Let us know if that's a big deal for you. I would love it if you could. They could install it as a firmware update, not necessarily as a new camera feature. But I, I have a feeling they're going to do that. I'm they look it, like they're going a nine a nine Mark II is going to happen. Yeah, I'm not going to get on oh. a nine Mark II. Maybe this a seven thousand. Who knows? All right, I wonder Ten if it'll, lenses. I wonder if it'll lock it. onto a fish eye, not just a dog. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fish uh, photographer. Oh, there you go. Underwater. Um, sharks. <laughs> uh, let's see. And also, they're announced, ob obviously, right? They're going to still have new lenses along the horizon. So it looks like Sony's saying they're going to have 10 or 10 plus new lenses coming around, however long that's going to be. But it looks like they're still committed to that. I don't know about APS-C, but we'll see about that. Um, I don't uh, know if there was anything else from that press conference specifically, do you recollect? I, I that's all I heard. Really... Did you guys see the uh, Cinema 5D interview? Yeah, and we're going to mention that right now. Uh, so Cinema 5D interviewed a senior manager, and this kind of blows a little bit. I think a lot of I think a lot of folks were kind of itching for an A7S III probably coming out this year, but it it might be out of the realm of possibility. So this interview with senior manager Yutaka Iwatsuki uh, by Cinema 5D, uh, I guess the summary is that they say expect the A7S III to be out longer than what you originally imagined. So I think we were all expecting it to come out this year, but I don't think it's going to happen. And they plan on trying to go beyond the customer's expectations. So I don't know if they're slowing it, the release down because of other manufacturers' products. That would all be speculation. We can talk a little bit about that. Uh, they don't have any plans for 8K recording on this camera, which I would expect. I wouldn't ex have expected that. And also, Sony's not planning any medium format cameras at this time. So, what do you what do you guys think on that, Dave or or Jason? Do you why why would they slow that release down, or is it just a response to what's going on? Uh, just really quickly before it goes away, super chat donation. MJ oh, Adams, that? MJ Adams coming in four ninety nine. Put this towards the 400 millimeter, Danny. <laughs> Thank you, MJ. If I don't end up buying it, I'll probably do a rental and review it. But man, it's gonna be it's gonna be like an expensive rental. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay. So, I think I think maybe they thought they were gonna do this is just speculation, but right. I think we're all expecting them to do like the A9 body that they've done with the R and then the 7.3 with the upgrades, the battery, all that. I think maybe they're just steering course towards maybe having its own kind of type of camera, maybe hopefully a flip out screen. Those rumors yeah. have been floating around, maybe a different body. There were also some, uh, I don't know if this is dipping into the photo segment, but there were some rumblings that I heard at the show on the floor that there might be a camera, whether it's from Panasonic or Sony that will have ND on sensor. So oh, like wow. electronic indie that's like in either in front of the sensor, similar to the FS5 or like actually embedded on the sensor. Again, it's all speculation and rumors, but it was floating around the show. Um, so they might be doing something like that and steering their course in that direction based off of what they've seen. Uh, and also based off of the sales of the a7 III is probably a little bit of an unexpected uh, yeah. surge with that camera. Cool. Yeah, that, yeah, that's the vibe I get. I, I don't think that um, since the A7 III is doing so well, what's the point of dropping an A7S III right on to the right now at this very moment? Um, but I, I hope it's more reactionary. And my perspective on this is that if 
Sony was ready to announce an A7S III and realized that the market was changing and they weren't able to deliver something that uh, was going to compete. Maybe say Panasonic, they kind of caught wind of what Panasonic was doing or what the other competitors were doing, that they wanted to take it back to the drawing board. I'm all for that. I'd rather them release a camera that's going to make most people happy about it than have a lot of people frustrated that they didn't deliver on it. So people are just going to have to wait a little bit longer for this unicorn camera, unfortunately. But that's interesting. Has Panasonic, uh, like their G, their G9 line or any of their like consumer more level cameras have built in ND? No. Any idea on that? I don't think so. No? No, th I this... This would be similar to like the FS5, where mm. it's actually got, I don't know the technology exactly, but it's its an electronic NV. It's not actually filters coming down. Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. And the thing is, so, some of Sony's uh, lower end cameras have this, like the RX10, uh, the, like, the RX10 series had this up to a certain point. Their RX100 series also had, had electronic ND. Um, so I'm wondering if it's a similar technology that they would be employing in the a7s3 potentially um but cool. if they could pull that off uh that would be very very exciting and, and that, that would certainly compete with the eos r filtration system i mean it'd be better yeah i actually that's what really appealed a lot to me with the canon eos r but the crop factor thing was a big big problem for me but other than that i really like the whole idea about the uh that nd filtration between it with the adapted lenses all right, that's good. I like that you were able to throw in some input there based on what people were talking about uh, on that. And uh, this was already mentioned before, I think, but it's already been officially announced, the Zeiss Bodice 40 millimeter F2. It's going to chime in at $1,299. It looks like, look like it's gonna ship in November. 67 millimeter filter thread. And of course, Jason Bong is going to get one for us. Right, Jason? Oh, snaps. All right, put it on the pressure on it. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get the 24G Master now. Gotta get the 40 millimeter Bodice now. Oh man, is it something it's, you'd consider getting though? It's oh yeah, question. definitely. I mean, like I think I talked about this um, back when we were reviewing the 35 Sigma. That I'm, I'm, I want to get another 35 1.4, but mm -hmm. um, just seeing how this Bodice 40 millimeters coming out and it's gonna be lighter, um, definitely piques my interest. So we'll see. I definitely want to be play, uh, want to play with it. Was it available to play with out there, Dave? If you remember. Uh, That's no. Nice Bodice 40. Okay. Hopefully they have something out in Photo Plus this October. I love 40 millimeter. I want to see more people doing that focal length. I think it's a, a kind of a special focal length because it's, I mean, it's literally in between 35 and 50. So yeah. it's a really interesting, isn't it? Don't people say it's actually more of a normal lens? Like 50 is technically a little bit more telly than the normal. I think 40 is the normal field of view. I don't know. I heard yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'm hearing, right? 40. And then you also had one from Sigma coming around the corner as well. So there's a lot of 40s yeah. coming out. I saw that one, the, the 40 from Sigma and the 28 yeah. from Sigma as well. Geotherma dropping $5 saying, it's starting to seem like many tech companies may be feeling the effects of the tariffs imposed. It seems to be putting a dent in many tech releases. Uh, hopefully that doesn't end up being the case for maybe a prolonged periods of time, if that ends up being the situation. Um, all right, thanks Geotherma for the $5. Let's see, there's actually one more big giant Sony rumor going around right now. It was actually kind of funny because on Sony Alpha Rumors website, there was a post saying that there was gonna be an announcement London time at 15, uh, 15 or so o'clock. Uh, and it wasn't actually an announcement. It was an announcement that the rumor was going to be posted at at 15 o'clock London time. But it appears that based on SR5 rumors that there is an impending announcement soon of an APS-C camera. This obviously being like an A7000 or whatever that model might be. But the specific rumor states that it's going to be in a full frame type body, like an A7 body with the EVF towards the center of the camera, just like what you would expect off of like a, a full frame body. And that looks like it's going to happen very, very soon as far as an announcement. So uh, very interested to see what that Isn't is. Isn't there a rumor that it flips up to the screen or something? I, I didn't catch that, but I... I thought I've seen that around that it might have a selfie screen. 
I mean, they could do that. They already have that in the A99 Mark II, their Sony Alpha camera, uh, their A mount. I, I don't know if it was in the 77 Mark II or not, but I mean, it'd be nice. It's just that how do you handle the whole audio situation with that if you were going to use this? But I guess you would probably use some sort of rig or cage to work around it. Um, but I I really just want to see that flip out screen on the side. Yeah, same. I All have, right. a, I have a theory that Canon has a patent on that. <laughs> I'm serious. I know, no, I, re I recall your video on that on <laughs> when you're talking to that guy. Oh yeah, yeah. I mentioned yeah, yeah. that. Video. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope that's not the case. But if they do release an APS-C that's more full, it's basically going to be predicted to be a little baby A9 potentially high frame, uh, high frames per second. Um, I I would be excited to see something like that. So I think there's a lot of people that would would probably see some benefit in that so we need, uh, we need chris bar uh, let us know if that's uh, sr7 let us know let us know or if it's going to be an rx10 mark 6 chris bar <laughs> let us know if it is just another um, point and shoot camera thank you oh boy all right and obviously they tailored that with uh there's also going to be lens announcements along with uh this a7000 launch as well so everyone that's been hoping for a fast zoom lens like a 1650 f2.8 <laughs> We might be uh, gifted with that along with the release. And I figured that if the body was going to get a little bit bigger, maybe it'll support a slightly larger lens for their lineup, which might make more sense. But I think you, we probably, I think a lot of people expect like a 1650 of 2.8 to be a very light lens. I don't know if Sony will be able to pull that off, but maybe they might. Maybe they might. Is Sigma going to do an 18 to 35 1.8 e mount? I mean, we're all hoping. <sighs> you know, I honestly, Dave, have you had a chance to really play around with like the Sony, Sony and like um, Sigma glass combo any at any point in time? No, I haven't done any tests with the new E mount Sigmas. I want to get some. I I just I, I've never felt the combo to work very well. So like I got the eighteen to thirty five here with the uh, the adapter and it works okay. Um, well, I mean I like think it, like a proper E mount version of right. It. Uh, even proper. Bad. Even proper E mount, I I never felt a hundred percent confident in it. It always okay. felt heavy, uh, oh, in terms sure. of the shutter. Like it's never, it feels a little bit heavier to press the shutter. It's kind of a, it doesn't have that like attack that goes with it. Like it's not as quick as a native lens when it gets going. But that's just been my experience with it. It works okay. It's just not you're not getting your full benefit out of it. That's the only thing I would say. So. All right, we'll kind of touch base a little bit about this alliance that's going on with Leica, Panasonic, and Sigma. Did you get to see any announcements on that live, Dave, or um, any thoughts oh, on that? Uh, just really quickly, oh. yeah, super chat donation, O Sport 500 for $5, going into that 400 millimeter for Danny. <laughs> All for 500, thank you, man, I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, so I was, uh, we were invited to the, the only press event that we were invited to the day before Photokina was the Sigma event. And we got to go there and um, see the announcement of the L mounts. Uh, I think there's 14 uh, Sigma art lenses that are going to instantly be available whenever this Panasonic uh, camera is available. So that's great. Um, and then I went to the Leica booth. They don't really have anything. They'd, I actually <laughs> talked to some of the employees that were working the booth, and they said, yeah. We didn't even know this L mount thing was going to happen until they announced it. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> they were keeping it a secret from uh, a lot of people. But um, I did get to see the lenses from Panasonic because I got to go back and do that interview that you keep mentioning, Danny. And um, yeah. they were, other than the 24 to 105, they were 3D printed models. They weren't even real lenses. They were like, oh. if, you, if you actually look closely at them, you can see like the jagged plasticky edges of it because it was literally just a 3D print. Wait, 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 wait. So uh, for those of you that are not sure what's going on, this is you're talking about the Panasonic, the S1, correct? The 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 L the L mount Panasonic lenses, right? Yeah, I'm talking yeah, the L mount lenses from Panasonic. So other than the 24 to 105, yeah. which was a working copy, mm. the 78 200, and then that 50, um, they were both just molds from a 3D oh. printer. Oh interesting did you even get it did you get a chance to hold hold those or they were bolted to the table <laughs> <laughs> that, 
That's interesting. So um, what you're saying is we can uh, 3D print our lenses now. For yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> the, uh, that Tinda, what is it? That Tinda 20 F1.7 micro four thirds lens. Yeah. That was, that was also uh, a 3D print, but they had it oh, in a, wow. they had it in a case so you couldn't even touch it. So Panasonic is like very, very early stages with all this. The That's... body, the body that they were showing wasn't even you couldn't even turn it on like it it didn't work at all. It was just the a Panasonic the S one their series right that yeah it, oh wow so it seems as if they're being very reactionary right now like they're just trying to get something out to keep people enticed in that system. Um, well, I, mean, I just think it's because of that alliance that they're announcing that they are like hey this is coming so just just hang on tight for a bit. And if you look at Panasonic's history, this is something that they do. For, like they've always done this with the GH3, GH4, GH5. Like a long um, announcement. Yeah, it's like a six month <laughs> kind of thing, and yeah. it's it's it, it's risky because they're literally like showing their hand to Sony. Yeah. Because Panasonic is apparently designing their own sensor here, so Sony really doesn't have any idea what they're doing. Um, and there's a lot, we can get into that camera. I I have a lot of guesstimations and heard rumblings uh, that I'm not, I wasn't, I didn't put in the video, but um, it's a really interesting camera for sure. So I do think, again, going back to the A7S, I think that's going to be a reaction to what Panasonic's doing probably. Yeah, let's just jump into it now while we're at it since uh, it's kind of hot on the topic right now. So uh, as far as the main details, so they're releasing two models and uh, the plan is uh, early 2019 around March. Was that kind of the guesstimate date for them? Or they just yeah, I I have a feeling that it'll be an AB time when it you can get one. And so we have two models that are coming out from Panasonic. They're full frame. They're L mount. The S1R series model is going to be forty seven megapixels, and the S1 model is going to be twenty four megapixels. Very similar to what Sony's been doing, what Nikon did early on. They're going to have a lower megapixel and a high megapixel option. Uh, some other notes that I wrote on here, and I think. Um, and again, if you haven't get if you get a chance to later on, definitely check out uh, the link to Kino Tika's channel, where Dave gets a chance to talk to one of the reps about this particular camera. It's pretty funny. I really enjoyed it and um, <laughs> took some jabs at some things, and um, I thought it was very fun. And it has two card slots. What I was wondering though, so it has two card slots: one XQD yeah. and one SD. Is it UHS two or is it just flat out UHS one? Did they even specify? Uh, I would guess it's UHS two, but they did not specify. But I mean, X is it XQD or QXD? I don't remember XQD. Uh, right? XQD. It's yeah, it's X. I was I was actually wrong in my video. I say four hundred megabits per second. It's actually megabytes per second. So like, it's mm. such a blazing fast card that um, there's a lot of speculation on why they would put that in there. Um, yeah. I mean, it's doing four K sixty. Panasonic has a history of doing ten bit internal. Um, the rumors from even a rep that kind of leaked some things that he said, he said that there's a chance that it'll do raw internal. So uh, video. Then, and you were holding the mock-up body that they had there. It's, yeah. it's a big camera. It's beefy, right? Yeah. It feels like a 5D. Like it, it really does not feel like a mirrorless camera. I would imagine that the it'll be lighter in real life because that was just a chunk of plastic basically. But um, but yeah, it, as far as the size of it, it is substantially larger than an A7. Uh, it, it feels like a DSLR. And I'm not going to lie, like it felt good. It, it balanced well with that 24 to 105. Yeah. That's always been the problem for me with the Sonys is they, uh, the bodies are a little small and the lenses are big. So having a bigger body helps balance that out a little bit. For me, I just like to either have a cage or a grip on my Sony and that kind of solves it for me. But um and you guys, I mean, know you were you I use was, a yeah one you were using a one D cinema. Are you still yeah, using yeah. that today? No, I sold it. I sold it. <laughs> oh, guys, wow. When I saw you guys, I had my one DC. I was still holding on to it, but I needed autofocus. We started yeah. doing live streams, and mm -hmm. I needed a good live stream camera, and I wanted like good internal four K that I didn't have to convert all the time. So yeah, uh, everybody switched to the A seven three. It's just a hell of a deal, and uh, <laughs> I'm I'm really loving it. The color science was the main thing that always like was my main reason for staying on Canon. And I really feel like Sony has like totally solved the color. Okay, cool. But anyways, uh, that's, that's a offshoot. But anyways, the, the Panasonic has two card slots and uh, a new battery. battery. 
Yeah, you. I saw you point that out. You were like opening up the battery door, <laughs> and then the guy, and you asked them, "Hey, is it the same battery?" And he said, "No, it's a larger battery, so it's going to be a different." Uh, yeah, and they're I mean, not. They're sense. not afraid to go big, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, they have, they have the space for it. I mean, why not, right? Yeah, they're just like they're not afraid to go big. Larger battery, larger camera. Larger big, yeah. camera card. Is the XQD a pretty big card? Yeah, it's um, yeah. It's like in between a CF and an SD, but uh, yeah. one and thing full that size like HDMI, yeah, full size HDMI, and like the body, I think, I think the size also has a lot to do with the codec that they're going to mm -hmm. do for video. Um, yeah. The problem with all these cameras and why they have to go external is because of the cooling and yeah. the way that the camera operates like that. So I, I think maybe they're just going big with it because they have a unique market with the Micro Four Third system being so small. This is a nice kind of almost Fuji type moment where Fuji had the APS-C and then they went yeah. big with medium format. Yeah. It's kind of like we're going with, if you want small and light, we got it. We got micro four thirds. Yeah. If you want big and epic, here you go. Now that's a really good point. Um, how did you, you had a chance to hold, uh, try out, hold the, the Canon EOS R. What, what's the size difference between you feel between the EOS R and this Panasonic mock-up that you had a chance to hold? The size EOS EOS R is more of a A7 style, I think, mm -hmm. with a with a bigger grip, um, which I like. The grip is really nice on the EOS R, but it's definitely more of like mirrorless, you know. What but do you feel like the the Panasonic is still a bigger camera? Absolutely, the yeah. S1. Totally. Yeah, I, I, it feels I'm like, really bang it's, it's like a five D. Like it really feels like a five D. Yeah, I'm really banking on the the fact that the larger size is really there to handle a lot of that heat. So yeah. um, if they're going to put it on 4K60, uh, full frame, so with IBIS. Hey, man, you did a good job of uh, getting some info out of that guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and also, I don't even know you're probably allowed to remove the lens because there was this little scene where you take the lens. I, I think you <laughs> I, ask him. Do you I ask have, him, am I supposed <laughs> I literally, I, this is what I did. I said, can I take him. this off? <laughs> 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 I, uh, yeah, I... I, I have a, I just, I don't know. My mentality is like, I don't, I'm not trying to make these guys happy. I'm just trying to make my audience happy. And if they kick me out, then who cares? I'll just make something. <laughs> happy. No, it's good, man. You got some good info out of it. Um, I know you one one, hopefully maybe it's something they can change down the pipeline, but you know, people are point, you were pointing out that there was no flip out screen and you definitely let them know. It's like, you kind of bummed out about that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so. I made a, I made a follow up video and I really called them out for it. Um, and one of the reps heard me because I was at the booth and I was basically yeah. saying, "I don't know why Panasonic is doing this. It's a stupid move. They need a flip out screen. Everybody wants a flip out screen. This sucks." And then the guy was standing right next to me and he came up to me and he was like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "Well, I post this video and I can't even tell you. Probably like a hundred comments are, yeah. why is there no flip out screen?" And he's like, interesting. I'll like tell that up the food chain. And then I ran into Dan, my contact, and I told yeah. him. And he's like, okay, yeah, we'll let we'll let them know. Like that's why we're here. We're getting so like I think part of the reason why they announced it so early is not only to like get it out there, but also to literally get some feedback and see if they need to go back to the drawing board and fix some things. So hopefully we'll get hey, a flip out screen. Panasonic's very receptive though. They're very receptive. Oh yeah. So that's actually like a good sign. Yeah, yeah, it was. They were kind of shocked. They're like, oh, you, you want a flip out screen? Huh? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I think everybody wants, I think everyone that's kind of do within the video sphere of things wants a flip out screen. So, yeah. Oh, I don't know, man. I hope they do it. I hope they, I hope it's there. So, hopefully, they can make the changes before. I mean, you said it's like pretty much just like a mold for right now. So, pretty much. Hopefully, to get that out. Um, uh, otherwise, like the button layout was great. It reminded me a lot of a GH5. It's got like a, ISO white balance exposure comp button up on the front. It feels good in the hand. The there's a record button right where your thumb would be. Um, the EVF like it it didn't work, but I mean it, it seemed nice. Um, so. The the Panasonic G9 has a, a pretty brilliant uh, EVF. I don't know if you guys have seen that one, but uh, I hope it's like that. That'd be nice. But I don't know. I, I really wonder if Sony it has a, is reacting to this particular camera. I wonder if it's on their radar. 
um, well, for their A7S three. Funny you say that. It, it reminds me because um, we got there at ten o'clock when they opened, and I went straight to the Panasonic booth to get that video done. And there was literally a mob of Japanese Sony uh, oh. uh, engineers that were just standing around the case, and they had like little notebooks, and they were literally. Are you, you're no. you're kidding? Are you no. serious? No, I'm dead serious. And oh, I was, crap. and I was filming. I was filming B roll with my A7 III, and they were like. Good camera, good camera. <laughs> so, it was pretty funny, but I I wanted to take oh, a picture wow. of it, but I feel like they would have probably like taken me out or something because it was kind of like suspicious almost. But there's oh, literally wow. about about fifteen Sony engineers just like looking at it, like huh, you know, just analyzing that. It. You heard it here first. It looks so. It appears as if Sony had no idea then, for the most part, what this camera was actually going to really like officially look like. Mm -hmm. Then it's coming about. I mean, I think that's wow. why Panasonic is specifically designing their own wow. sensor in partnership with Leica. So, wow, that is freaking awesome! I, I think that's pretty cool that that's that's even happening. So, um, you're right, and that, I think that's why the guy was so very specific about not mentioning any codecs, not mentioning anything else that the camera will deliver. Mm -hmm. uh in terms of specifics because they're waiting to see what the reaction is from everybody else and what they want to see so wow it's going to be exciting um i'm just <laughs> it's fun it's times be, yeah oh shoot it's gonna be a, and and again if the sigma lenses if they work out their autofocus i know people are another issue was that it's going to do contrast af and yeah. doesn't it's not gonna have phase detect so maybe that's something they can work on prior to the actual delivery of the camera if there's enough vocalization on that um that's so, a big bummer though isn't it yeah. the autofocus but hey i mean that. if they can get it out there maybe something might change and speaking about the autofocus um another point that came out was that there's firmware i don't know if it's already released or will be released about the gh5 gh5s and i think the g9 that'll help improve the video autofocus i believe i think that was kind of um around horizon so yeah. Panasonic hasn't given up on that or trying to work that out, but hopefully for those I mean, who have a Panasonic. When I saw Kai, he was literally just walking around the show with the GH5 with that 7 to 14, just vlogging himself like it was <laughs> just working every time. And I was like, man, GH5, God, I would never. I mean, our friend Levi Allen vlogs yeah. on the GH5 and he pulls it off. So I guess you can do it. Well, as long as you can see yourself, right? Because if you see yourself and it's not focusing, you can make the adjustment. <laughs> exactly. unlike, unlike unlike Sony. I, I remember like back when I was using the GH4, if you tap on the screen, it will focus. So yeah. it won't do the continuous tracking very well, but if you tap on it, you will be in focus. So And you got plenty of depth of field to work with, uh, I would imagine in some cases. So <laughs> yeah, good point. I mean, you'll be all right. Okay, um, I don't know what else you guys want to dive into. You want to dive into the ZX1 a little bit here, uh, oh, really yes. quick. Yeah. And Dave, did you get a chance to to check out the ZX1 by any chance? Is that the Zeiss? The yeah, the all-in-one full-frame 35 millimeter lens. So that um, was uh, when they announced that. The next day, we were like, "Where's Zeiss? Where's Zeiss? We need to get <laughs> to this." They did not have a booth at all. Oh they wow! Only, they only released it at this like exclusive press event. And what the heck? I uh, I had a friend who wanted to invite us, but my buddy and I were just trying to get edits done, and so we mm -hmm. turned it down. And I was like so pissed that we didn't go to the event. All right, so let me go ahead and just run through the rundown on the specs on this. So it's a um, it's thirty seven megapixels. It's similar to an RX one R series type Sony camera where the lens is uh, fitted onto the body already. It's a full frame thirty seven megapixel sensor. The lens is a thirty five f two Zeiss lens. Obviously, its ISO range from eighty to fifty one thousand two hundred. Multi touch display um, has an EVF, has Wi Fi, Bluetooth, USB Type C transfer and some really highlighting features. It has a built-in solid state storage of 512 gigabytes. It has Lightroom built into this camera software. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, it has Lightroom inside this camera. I have one what of those. <laughs> there Jason's you go. very excited about this. Jason, what are your thoughts about this ZX1? You seem very 
Enticed. I think I think the fact that like Zeiss is like putting it in their camera, hopefully other camera manufacturers would follow suit. Cause like I'm just like I'm using these cameras and I want to be able to just like upload these photos on Instagram and Facebook like right away, be able to edit the raw files right away instead of having to port it to my phone. And even like you can't even port the raw files to your phone unless you have like the SD card adapter for your specific device or whatever it is you're using. So I think like really eliminating that middleman of having to like go through your phone to upload to social media, be able to upload directly from the camera would be a pretty neat idea. And plus with Lightroom, uh, CC mobile built right into it, I think it makes it easier just to like um, edit the raw files and just upload it to social. Does it have a LTE chip in it? Or I don't. No, no, I don't. I don't think it does, and I think that was something they kind of missed. I think um, it almost would have been if it was just all in one straight to Instagram, like from the camera. That'd be pretty yeah. cool. But if you if you can like tether your internet from your phone to it, I mean, I wouldn't mind. You know, I was telling Jason be, uh, before the show was, what if they just made a version of this that was an emote that you could change the lens out. Mm. Um, I know, it kind of defeats the purpose of the single body, like the thirty five f two, but having a camera body maybe with LTE built uh, with a, you can put a SIM card in it and you have the flexibility of all these different lenses. This thing would be a versatile monster, or but e I don't. eSIM would work too, eSIM. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean eSIM? Uh, <clears throat> it's a new technology that's, uh, we should be seeing it soon in phones where you don't need a SIM card anymore. Okay. But uh, uh, Samsung is supposed to be making some new cameras again. And I could almost see Samsung doing this kind of thing. Hmm. Was Samsung present at all over there at Photokina? No, other than the people who were using their phones. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So as far as this Zeiss ZX1, there's no pricing yet. Uh, you are going to get 4K at 30 frames per second. So they are giving you some video features. It has a microphone jack and a headphone jack. So obviously video is, uh, is thought of in this camera system. Over-the-air updates... And uh, a very paltry three frames per second. So it's not your speed demon camera. You're definitely going to take your time with this. It's faster uh, than this one. One frame a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one's a medium format, right? So I mean, yeah. there's a big difference there. Are you, so. are you guys going to buy this? Like, is it cool enough to review it and keep it or review it and then sell it on eBay? Talking Jason? about Hasselblad or are you talking about Zeiss? <laughs> the Zeiss. The Zeiss. <laughs> I don't know yet. It really depends on the pricing. I mean, like, it's a very niche camera. I think like it's it's it kind of it's it's like the what RX one R right, Danny. It's it's very similar to that except it's, it's just a tad I, bit bigger. And I've and I've niche. never and I've never used the RX one R ever. So um, I I don't know. It's a very neat. It, like you said, it's very niche. But I think we can agree that it's kind of an interesting direction to see what's possible because I think we've always thought of. Um, Having internal storage, like a sizable amount in a camera, would be nice. Um, funny enough, this won't have, uh, as everyone jokes around now, dual card slots. So no card slot, <laughs> no <laughs> card slot. Your move, Canon. <laughs> They're just like, we're just gonna get rid of the card slots altogether and just do solid state storage. Yeah. So going go on right to the to, a, to the next extreme, no card slots. Oh man, uh, Danny, does your light change color, or is, it, or is your white balance set to auto? Uh, I think I have it set, I think, on my camera. <laughs> your, your light is, like, constantly changing. It's throwing me off. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we want to quickly talk about the GoPro Hero 7? Did you have a chance out there, Dave, to look at that? or I did, yeah. And we're, we would definitely want to pick one up. Um, we went to their booth. And, uh, man, that stabilization, that's kind of obviously the, the, big, uh, the, big the big talk of it. I mean... I saw Casey's video on it, and I saw Maddie just posted one as well. And um, I can't wait to test it out. But like uh, Dan Chung from Atomos showed me some footage that he was experimenting with, and he was just holding it like literally just in selfie mode like this, yeah, and walking around. And it seriously like looked like a gimbal. It's really, really amazing. I yeah, dude, that hyper smooth stabilization. Oh, it's. It's piquing my curiosity. I definitely want is, to take one up and try. Is drive. there any audio input in that thing? Is there any way to get audio into it? Should, there There's, should be. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing as before. You have to use a little dongle, like a little USB to mic input. Yeah, interesting. That'd Just look, be up, very look up GoPro vlog. 
set up on YouTube and there's a bunch of people that have <laughs> tutorials. But yeah, uh, I mean, it is. It's it's actually a clever way to vlog. I mean, is it in 1080p only though for that hyper smooth no, stabilization? That's that's one thing I verified with them because if the previous model, the six black, uh, yeah. 1080p was better in stabilization and. He, the guy there confirmed with me that like all the way up to the max resolution in 4k it's oh, like full there we go that's exciting that is very wow. exciting gopro coming back into the game i mean that's <laughs> going to be an interesting tool i mean it's like also a b-roll camera if you're trying to kind of work as a one-man crew um that's that's very interesting very curious to see what that does so it's going to be 399 dollars uh, for the gopro hero 7 black 4k 60p not bad. Two and a half, a two point seven K at one hundred twenty frames per second, and two hundred forty P at ten eighty P. So, um, I think uh, those you lose it. You lose stabilization at one twenty and above, though. Tonight. Okay, that's fine. Got it. You don't need uh, it. It's already slow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> folks. If you're still watching us this evening, don't forget to drop a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far. And also, if you do get a chance to check out Dave's channel in the description below, he's on his own personal channel as well as Kino Tika uh, as the other YouTube channel that he's on as well. And uh, definitely check it out for some source on some photo Kina news. All right, um, Dave. Was there anything else at Photokina that you thought was memorable to mention before we jump into Q and A section here. And uh, so we are going to jump into Q and A very soon. So if you have any questions for either of us, drop Q A hashtag Q A, and we'll try to dive into and tackle those. Yes. So there are two things that come to mind instantly when you ask that question. One is, <laughs> <laughs> you like how I did a complete sentence there? Uh, it's because I've interviewed a lot of uh, talking heads over my years. Um, yeah, the Kippon, which is a company that makes adapters, made a lens that was kind of mind blowing. It's a 40 millimeter 0 0.85, which is like nuts. It is APS-C only, so you're going to use it on a Sony E mount or Fuji X mount. Those are your only options. But is I put it on. Lens? What's that? That's the pink lens. Yeah, so it comes in pink and black. <laughs> Okay. So uh, interesting. Yeah, that's where I was with Kai actually at the end of his vlog. He talked about that, but the the lens, like it just it looks like it just looks super good. The bokeh is great. Um, I posted a, a photo from it on my Twitter account, and we're get, we did a review on it. Um, so we'll have that on Kinetika later this week or this month. But uh, that was really interesting, and it's a great price. It's like I think. 1200 bucks or something maybe is, maybe less, is it but. is it manual is it uh manual or a, yeah uh, auto okay it's manual, it's manual and focus manual. only but like they're claiming like this is the world's fastest lens so it's kind of cool um really specialty but the bokeh rendition is really beautiful so kind of fun and then another thing that's like a really practical tool that i didn't see many people talk about um is from a company called unleashed and they started mm -hmm. as a, a kickstarter project and they make these little adapters that plug into the USB micro on the Sony's or the flash sync on the Nikon's. And then with the Canon's, they actually have to use HDMI and USB because they're taking power out of the HDMI. But basically, it's a tiny little dongle thing. It's super small. And they have an app. And you can have like up to eight different cameras or maybe more on your phone. Control everything about your camera. Record video change your ISO, all your settings. Um, the app itself has like a ton of time-lapse features. So you can do like a speed ramp time-lapse. You can, you know, do things for your exposure. It's extremely intelligent. Um, and it, the way that it works is like it's synced over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and it's always connected. So you basically don't have to use any of the fiddly garbage apps from all these camera companies now and just buy this little dongle and like you can have a Sony camera, a Canon camera, and a Nikon camera all in this one app controlling every feature of it. And it's kind of a brilliant idea. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So Is it, that, it, you can only control it. Can you also do like a, a live feed as well? So you can see what your image looks like or it's just like a... Yeah, it's just control, unfortunately. Ah, okay. so, Damn. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, 
And the, the problem with the Canon module is they're getting power for the dongle because they didn't want to put batteries in it. They're getting yeah. power through the HDMI. So uh, like if you're filming video and you don't have a flip out screen or something like you're totally screwed because you can't even view it. But um, on a Sony or something, you could plug in HDMI and still use a monitor while you use the app. Um, same for Nikon, but the Sony one isn't out yet. They're still working on it. It's coming out in a couple months, but the Nikon and Canon versions are available now. It's called Unleashed. They gave me a demo unit for Canon and um, I'm real excited to try it out. I think it's a really brilliant solution. It's basically filling that need of just having a solid, reliable mobile uh, platform for your cameras and being able to control things wirelessly and multiple cameras at that. So. Pretty cool. That's that's cool. I, nice. I did see that um, either in Kai's vlog or something. But speaking of that, how was it? Uh, we talked a little bit about this at the beginning, but uh, bumping into Kai at the actual <laughs> uh, Photokina show. Yeah, Kai W. He's like he's the biggest influence for me um, because uh, as you keep referencing my Panasonic video, like we don't all of our videos are funny. Like we try to make all of them funny. Um, and that's just part of my style. And I just, I can't do serious. Like I have my, my shooter always wants to do like edgy, sexy Peter McKinnon style stuff. And I tell him all the time, <laughs> I'm like, I can't, I can't do cool. Like it has to be funny. So um, Kai, in my opinion, is like the perfect balance of entertaining and uh, educational and like, that's I just like he's kind of the guy and so meeting him I was totally fanboyed and was like oh, I'm like you really influenced me and like I have a channel and I know you don't know who I am and whatever and he was like okay like he didn't care at all but <laughs> it's like, uh, cool, man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly but I hung with him for like 10 or 20 minutes and we riffed a little bit like I said, you're the only YouTuber that can say balls and get away with it on your videos. And he was like, yeah, I love saying balls. I was like, ah, oh, man, it's so great. But yeah, um, we were walking around and like every two feet we would walk, some company would, the CEO of some company would come up to him, give him his card and say, hey, we want to give you this. Can you review this? Like it was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there was one booth that we went to where we were with Dan Chung, who was kind of chauffeuring us around. And I think the CEO of the company didn't know who Kai was. And Dan was like, you want him to review your product. Give it to him now. Because Kai, <laughs> Kai was like kind of interested in it. And so he was like, you don't realize this, but like if you let him review this, you're going to make like $100,000. So, <laughs> um, so it was fun to like see people just come up to him. And he was chill, but he was really tired. Like I could tell he, he was not fully there because I think he was – traveling all day so that's that's our go someday to just walk up to a company and just be like yeah that these are the guys just give them the product yeah exactly and that this was really the first time for me like because when we started at nab we were brand new and this year was the first year this this event was the first event where like you know i got a couple of demo units so i think it was worth it um you guys should come it's an expensive trip but i think it was totally worth it to go we missed out. Oh. Damn it, Danny, we missed out. I told you. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Kai was great. And then who else did I meet? I met Andrew Reed from EOS HD. Ah. Um, in fact, if you go on EOSHD.com right now on the homepage is uh, a little podcast we did together. So that was a lot of fun. Um, if you guys aren't aware of who Andrew Reed is, he's kind of like a a punk rock character of the internet when it comes to camera reviews. <laughs> so uh, he was hilarious. Like in real life, he is just the most like chill, uh, sarcastic guy. And um, like he was talking to about Canon. He was like, I just want full frame 4K. Why can't I have freaking 4K full frame? He's like going on and on having this big discussion with a Canon rep, having like a big argument. And like, it was so funny to see it in, in real life. And uh, we really connected on a lot of levels because I agree with them like on some of those things. But also at the end of the day, like it's just camera stuff. Like we don't have to get in a fist fight about it. So yeah. Cool, man. Um, all right. 
Let's tackle some questions. Hopefully. Oh, can I talk about the Nikon? Hopefully we got Jason. Real fast. Yeah, go ahead. I, I got some hands-on time with the Nikon Z6 and the Z7, mm -hmm. but the Z6 was the one I was most interested about. There's two problems with it for video. One is both cameras have a ridiculous lag on the screen when you're oh, filming video. No. So like if I go like this, it's like it's like that. Like when I look at it, it instead of Oh man, the latency is like I'm using a monitor. Exactly. And when you plug a monitor into it, that latency is still there too. But if you're oh. shooting in live view for photos, there's no latency at all. So I really hope that they solve that in firmware. And it's the same on both the Z6 and the Z7. So the latency is bad. Like it was almost so bad that like I would have trouble filming with it. So that was bad. The second thing that was bad is the rolling shutter on both cameras in 4K in full frame and in crop mode. The rolling shutter on both cameras was really bad. The the seven was worse than the six. Um, I didn't really compare it to my A7 III. Uh, the A7 III isn't the best either in, in 4K. Um, so, you know, it is what it is, but like the rolling shutter is definitely not good. So rolling shutter is bad wow. and the latency is probably the worst I've ever seen. Wow. So I don't, auto, I don't, autofocus is good on it though for video. I don't, I don't think anyone's, I don't even know if anyone's mentioned that yet. <sighs> That's two firsts here. Exclusive <laughs> <laughs> from Dave and Kino Tika. <laughs> Dang, we're getting some exclusives today, man. Oh man. All right, so okay. Q and A time. All right, let's uh, see here. Coming in from Young Swag, hashtag QA, A6500 A6 versus A7 III for hybrid shooter. My pick would be the A7 III. You'll be you'll have a much better user experience using the full frame camera with the bigger battery. Hey, if you get our video shooters here, hey. Oh, whoa, whoa. He's in the oh, house. hold on, hold on. Oh, <laughs> snaps. Caleb's in the nice. house. Caleb's in the house. All right, awesome. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the eight, if you can if you can get up to the A7 III, you, you're going to be much more happier. Uh, but if you can only budget a 6500, still not a bad start. All right, um, Scott Waldron, anything interesting mentioned about the Sigma Foveon L mount cameras? Dave, I think that's for you. Uh, no, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> the the Sigma Sigma was also expected to release cameras as well with part of that partnership yeah. and using that Foveon sensor tech that they have. So I'm guessing so nothing the only, mentioned. <clears throat> the only thing that they mentioned at the press release was that they're going to completely stop developing their current uh, camera system, which nobody uses. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> like when you buy a Sigma art lens, it gives you options. Like, do you want Canon EF, Sony E, Nikon or Sigma SA? And it's like, What's Sigma SA? Um, <laughs> so yeah, other than that news, like, yeah, I mean, there's talk about this new one, but they didn't release any information on it. All right, Eli is asking, have you tried printing your photos at home? I used to buy prints when I needed them, but I recently got into photo printing using Canon printers and it brings a new perspective to my photography. Uh, I've done printing before, Eli. Funny enough, I actually purchased another Canon Pixma Pro 100. There's a, there was a sale on it for $59 after rebate. So I just went ahead and picked one up to replace one that had problems. So cool. Uh, Jason, Adam. Oh, sorry. What does any, does anyone else print? Dave, do you print? No, no, I don't take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I don't take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Adam C Bowen one Q and a Sony a 63, a 6,000 or the six, uh, 6,300 or the Canon M 50. I already have Canon glass, the 24105, and the 50 F1.8. You might want to wait for the EOS R. It's so expensive. Ah, that's a problem. If the EOS R was fifteen hundred bucks, it'd be. Uh, I would recommend it, but the A7 III is cheaper. Yeah. Just give just give the EOS R six months. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, just give it six months, and that price will crash. Yeah. I. It's every single time. Um. Zed Pro Media is in the house too. What's up, man? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Zed Pro's in the house. Um, that's a tough one, man. If you're into video and you just want to like vlog, the M50 is not a bad choice. Uh, the A6000, A6300, if you want a little more functionality out of your camera, but you have some Canon glass, I think you're, you're definitely going to want to try to go Sony glass for those if you can. Yeah. 
Uh, Oscar asks, QA, Sigma 35 versus the Sam Yang 1.4. Worth the extra buck for my A7 III, not for a professional work. I don't remember if the 35, I heard one I, good thing. I, I hear it just... I used it. Ahead, I used it at the show, so I can speak to this. Uh, Which one, the Sam Yang? Yeah, the Sam Yang. I although I don't know if you guys have used the Sigma. Um, I use the Sigma. I have not used the Sigma, so we're we're in like an opposite situation. I wish I have used both. I will say the autofocus was really good on it, and it's really lightweight, uh, and the bokeh looks great. So I was really impressed with. I actually am considering buying either that one or the 50 from Sam Yang because it's surprisingly good. I didn't like the Sam Yang 50, but I just, I, I never mean, test, I never tested out the I Sam only, Yang 35. I only tried the 35. So we yeah. are not helpful at all because yeah. we don't have any <laughs> no. reference points. No, I, I don't. I just know that the Sam Yang 50 was hard. It was not very good. Um, but then again, I wasn't able to update the firmware because they didn't have the firmware available, so I don't know if that improved it. But the optical quality compared to the other options, it just didn't meet, meet up with it very well. Okay, okay. I say yeah. rent, then Mr. Yeah. So-and-so. Yeah. <laughs> did, did Danny eject himself? I don't know. There's some dead air there. I was kind of, oh, he's gone, isn't he? What's up? <laughs> uh, there you go. He's Navi's hey. asking about the Lau the Laua ten to eighteen at ten millimeters set to infinity. What will be still in focus? I I don't know off the top of my head what would that would be. I haven't used the ten to eighteen, so I don't know. Yeah, but Laua's releasing a full frame ten to eighteen. Really? Holy yeah. yeah. A ten to eighteen great. full frame. Um, I don't know the spec the details other than that, but I'm that's very interesting to me. Let's see. Hey, Jason, can I ask you a question real fast? Oh, man. QA from live. <laughs> live QA. I, I haven't watched your video on the 24. What are your like bullet points on the new 24.14? Uh, light is 24 in the market. Well, 1.4. Um, it's good. I don't know what else to say about it. Bullet points. <laughs> um, has an aperture ring. You can go clickless aperture. Autofocus is pretty fast. What else do you want to know? I don't know. Like, you're not going to get it because you feel a 24 to 70 to 8 is enough for you? or Oh, I'm, I am ha I haven't placed my order yet, but I'm getting a review copy. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. A lot of things are coming out, man. I used to love the Canon 24 and 14. You're in here first. So I'm considering buying one because I, I love the 24 and 14. Uh, it's a good, it's a great focal length. And having one four on a wide lens is great for stuff like this. Like I would use it right now because I'm literally arm's distance using my 16 and 35. So hmm. let's see here. Uh, Photo Miag brought up Andrew Reed got some beef with Caleb of DSLR video shooter. Did you mention that? Uh, I did. You did, so right? I actually, so we did uh, three like interviews because we really ended up hitting it off. I did two for him, and then I did an interview with him for our channel, and we'll be posting it. And I addressed that directly with him in the interview. <laughs> I said, hey, Caleb is my friend. Like, I love Caleb Pike, and we're buddies, and you have some beef with him. You called him out, and what do you have to say about that? And his, his viewpoint on it was, I feel like he said, if I were to meet Caleb, I'm sure he's a great guy, but I feel like that he was maybe a little biased towards the USR because he went to Hawaii and he's just sticking to that story. Um, Caleb is, in my opinion, one of the best reviewers on the, on the YouTubes. And uh, I do not think that he was biased because he did have some negative things to say as well. But um, I mean, it's hard for anybody to receive gear from any company or even just go to an event like that and, not have a little hint of bias. I mean, it's just really hard. I know you guys deal with that. I mean, I'm, I'm reviewing this camera. They gave it to me for like a month. And of course I'm going to like try to give them a good review. But I got to be honest too. So I don't know, but Andrew didn't really like say sorry or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they can get worked out at some point on a live yeah. stream or something. <laughs> um, I was asking Q and Lowe's. 
Uh, should I wait for the A7000 or should I upgrade to the Alpha 6500 now? I'm a beginner and own the A6000. I'd say wait a little bit. Yeah, just wait. Here's the problem. Unless you really need to upgrade to something better, then do it. But it seems like announcements are happening left and right right now, and it looks like an APSC announcement is coming up soon. So it won't be cheap, though. I don't think this upcoming APSC is going to be cheap, so don't expect it to be uh, like A6500 price. Let's see. I'm so glad they're doing it, though. I've, I've felt like Sony's kind of put APSC on the back burner, so this will be good. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 Could use those small, sexy Sigma APS-C Sony lenses, the 16 and the 30 and that new 55 or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Those, little, those little Sigma lenses, the little APS-C oh, yeah. Sigma lenses. Those are great. I, I, the ones that were really cheap, the 2.8, I wasn't liking them for video when I was testing them out. No, no, I'm talking about like the, there's like a 16 one. Oh, or something. oh those, huh? those are good. Those are good. Yeah, those yeah. are good. I would love to get a set of those for this new APS-C camera. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see here. Q&A, A7000 A7 or A7 III when specs are out. That's a pretty big difference between those two cameras. A7000 or A7 III. I don't know. Yeah, just wait till the specs are out. No idea. Caleb's Russell. wanting to know. Oh, sorry. Caleb's yeah. wanting to know the specs on that little mini A9. Did we go over that? I mean, we kind of did, but we don't it's, know. It's, I mean, like it's just all speculation. Like it's just, just like it's it's possibly coming out, but we don't have any specs to it. I, I think you would just expect it to be a full a Sony A9, but APS-C body. Just assume all those specs. I hope it has the same battery. It should, right? I hope so. I hope so too. If it's going to be the, an A7 body, then it's definitely going to go that way. Cool. Uh, Rusty's asking thoughts on the the Sony 100 to 400 G Master. Uh, if you can't afford a 400 2.8, get that. That's what I use because <laughs> I can't afford the 400 2.8 right now. So it's a good lens. I really like the 100 400 for daytime stuff. Uh, da da like Danny, we need to have like a, a little chart, some sort of animation on every live show that like lets lets people know <laughs> how far you are from getting that that four hundred f two point eight. Oh my goodness! Uh, why, why would you need that? Do you use like telephoto a lot? I do a lot of sports, like high school sports, but I don't okay. need it for that for high school sports. But it'd be nice to have because I'm shooting at ISO twenty thousand because our football field's really dark yeah. and. That's at 5.6. So if I was at 2.8, I get a couple stops there and drop it down a little bit better. Yeah. But it's not. I bet your, your 20,000 ISO shots are still better than Mama Mama Jean's pictures on her iPhone 10. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so you're already crushing it, bro. I completely miss everything you just said. I'm getting lag on my end. Oh, ah, man. sorry. Your internet's very cold. I, I just. I just heard you were, I was crushing it or something like that. I don't know. I heard that. Hey, you guys know I'm moving to LA in a month or, or like in three weeks, right? Oh, yeah. There we go. You were right, Danny. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> did I disappear? <laughs> you uh, did. Am I gone? I'm You're moving. Gone. I'm moving to. Your, your uh, potato quality internet can't, can't keep up anymore. It's because it's past eight o'clock. Oh. I'm moving to oh. Orange County in three weeks. Everyone's moving. Told you, Jason. County. I told no, no, you. I you were right. <laughs> Laguna, we're moving to Laguna Niguel. There so. you go. Okay. Nice. I'll That's tell nice you area. later why. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, better internet, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> how are you going to be able to do the Kino Tika stuff? Are you going to be able to do it remotely, or how does that work out for you? What do you mean? We'll shoot it at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Connor, my shooter and editor, is literally moving with me, too. He's going to get an apartment in the same complex as us. So we're converting his living room into the studio. Wow. Oh, okay. That's the guy right there. Yeah. Let's see here. Is there any more questions? I think we'll take maybe one or two more. If you guys see anything. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing some of the – a couple of very simple First. ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah, very similar stuff. 
people are asking about a7000 or fuji xt3 oh man I mean, can we speak about the xt3 for a minute i yeah go for it man i cannot tell you how many xt3s i saw walking around the trade show there was probably like it was literally all Sony A7s and XT3s everywhere. That's all it Seriously. was. Seriously, and the yeah. XT3 just came out. You're saying that people just had them in hand already? Yeah, I saw them around people's necks, and like people were shooting with it. Andrew Reed had one, and I like we were gonna skip it and not even do a review on it. Uh, but we're we're definitely gonna do a review on it because there's kind of quite a kind of like it just came out during. It was literally the same day as the USR. And people are starting to realize, dang, this camera's good, man. 4K 60, 10-bit internal. The rolling shutter is insane. Like, there's n basically none. Uh, the autofocus is really good. Like, it's really gotten better. And it's got the Fuji color science. So there's a lot of things to love about it. Um, and for $1,500, it's a really powerful tool. I mean. Yeah. Price point-wise, it's, it's, it's amazing what it's offering. Um, it just sucks I don't have Fuji lenses. I would be all over that camera. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like Fuji cameras are designed to like use adapted vintage lenses. Like I don't want to buy any Fuji lenses. I want to put like some manual 80s Zeiss lenses on there or something. You know? <laughs> I'm the brown dropping $10 for the rental of the 400 millimeter F2.8. <laughs> You know, we just had Manny Ortiz drop in. I think, unless he just dropped in now, he's saying X-T3 is a sexy camera. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> is Manny picking one up? What's going on here? Is he going to try one out? Um, let's see here. All right. Did I just disappear or something like that? No, you're still here. Oh, you're okay. Still. I don't know. I don't know what's going on anymore. This potato stream <laughs> is uh, not That's going gonna, so Getting worse. Uh, if you guys yeah. want to see, uh, if you guys want to see a bunch of XT3 stuff, check out Zed Pro Media. He's in the chat. He's got a bunch of videos on it. He's kind of the go-to Fuji guy. So he's the Jason yeah. Vong of Fuji. <laughs> oh damn, damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, while we wind down, Dave, what what other things do you have up the pipeline, or what you're going to be doing? Are you going to be at Photo Plus, or what other events you're going to be taking a look at? Uh, yeah, as far as things coming up, it's really just about packing this house up and getting over to California. I've got a one-year-old as well as a wife. Uh, <laughs> I had a wife first and then I had a one-year-old just to, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're moving. And, um, the reason that we're moving, I can't really announce a ton of stuff, but I will be working with Polar Pro. I'll just go ahead and say that. Uh, so I'll be working with Polar Pro and continuing Kinetika. So, exciting stuff um yeah just working hard and staying up late getting these edits done you know how it goes that's cool. yeah yeah jason on your end what's going on on your on down the pipeline for jason ball photo plus danny you coming or not ah i don't <laughs> know man when is i am october 25th to the 27th so if anybody's in new york when I was going to Photo Plus, I'll be there. Dang, I'm trying to convince Danny to go. That's if, Jason, if someone can tell me if they're going to drop a camera at Photo Plus, I will be there. If someone can give me an SR10 rumor right now and Chris say they're going to drop. Someone in Chris Bar right now. Where are you at? Chris Bar, let me know. I will I will try to make arrangements hey, to go. Hey, Jason, <laughs> is, Jason, are they going to – is it like a Photokina in America kind of thing? Like do you think Panasonic will be there and like all that kind of stuff? I, I'll, I mean, I think I'm pretty sure all the camera companies will be there. I mean, I don't know okay. if it's going to be on the same scale as Photokina because Photokina sounds epic, but Photo Plus is a pretty cool show too. Cool. <laughs> Boris just popped up right now. He just said, I will see you there. There you Thank go. Boris. See you there, Boris. <laughs> uh, Rykrat just dropped $5. Want to get a first uh, mirrorless camera soon during winter sales, probably an Alpha 6500. Really enjoying your channel. Thank you, Rykrad, for dropping the five bucks. Really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Zed Pro says, I will never be the Jason Vong of anything. He is a legend. And that's oh, very, very oh. true. Guys, <laughs> guys, guys, come on. I got to see the, uh, I did get to see the Zion Crane 3, whatever it's called. Oh, I'm so jealous. Have you seen it, Jason? I have not touched it. So I've seen images of it. I've seen coverage of it. But I, it's pretty dope. I, I'm not going to lie. Like, 
I think it's a great response to the Ronin S because the Ronin S was like very Massive. good. So Massive. But yeah, it's it's a brilliant idea, really innovative. A lot of great features on it. Pretty excited. So are we going to see something with Jason with the Zuyun that uh, new gimbal? Hopefully. <laughs> Please send it my way it's, so I can play with it. Behind you though, right? Oh yeah, totally. In the box. <laughs> All right, I think we're going to have to end this live stream before it becomes a complete potato. Um, again, everyone, thank you for joining us this evening. Drop a like if you enjoyed the stream. Make sure you check the description. Check out Dave's personal channel as well as Kino Tika. And as usual, our next show is going to be on Jason Bong's channel. So we will be there next week. See you guys on my channel next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Thank Peace. You guys. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> Get <Getting> all close. <laughs> see you, everybody. <laughs>